let's create something today. And today, this is what you will see come to life. Maybe you recognize someone there. I hope you do. But let's take it from the beginning. Often when I paint a portrait, I start with the person that I want to portray. Then afterwards, I search for a soothing setting for this person. Sometimes I just paint them directly, but I really like to reuse great works from the history of art. And it makes it easier as well, because I still see all my painting as training. I continue to learn, and that's an important part of why it's fun as well. So I like to place portraits within existing pieces of art, but this time I didn't start with the people that I wanted to portray. Instead, I chose the artwork directly. I'm a great admirer of Caravaggio. I have previously painted the Doubting Thomas, and now I thought I'd take on another resurrection image by him. This time I want to paint Soprat Emos. I know this would be a challenge. There are a lot of details in this painting. It's also hard, if not impossible, to come close to the mastery of Caravaggio, but I do it anyway. I've seen this painting many times before, but now when I thought about painting it, I started to fantasize about who could be portrayed in this setting. It looks like they're conspiring, doesn't it? And what better people to portray in this painting then? than some modern conspirators. Well, I don't believe they are really conspirators, but it's obviously people that do, because the person that I will have as my Jesus character here will be Jordan Peterson. I don't believe he would really like to be compared to Jesus, but I'm doing it anyway, since um, he talks about Jesus a lot, and he also has kind of a modern messianic message that he's communicating to the world. So I could really see him sitting there at the table speaking to his disciples. And who be the disciples then? I decided to paint in a couple of other well-known characters that also have a big online following. I was thinking uh, Joe Rogan here. The, the person here to the left, he's got almost the exact post that Rogan has in the post-fight interview. So I thought it would be, I would be able to find a good photo of Rogan to paint from. I could have picked a lot of different people for the other two, but eventually I settled with Dave Rubin here and Ben Shapiro. The tricky thing is to get the resemblance right when they're looking away from the viewer. So that will be a challenge here, definitely. If I'd been able to have a photo shoot with them, that would be perfect for this, but I couldn't do that, so I went for the second best option. I downloaded photos from the internet and created my own original to paint from. The angle is difficult, but then I also need the right lighting, and that makes it almost impossible to get it exactly right. I had to create the sketching from the different photos of them, and then work with the lighting while looking at the original painting and the original characters. Another thing is the size of the painting. The original painting is almost two meters in width. That's too big for me, so I decided to go a lot smaller. My painting will be less than half that size. And to portray a face, ideally, I want the heads to be around 20 centimeters in height on the canvas. Since the painting contains a lot of scenery, the faces are rather small in the image. So I decided to crop it down a little to make the faces a little larger. But they're still a bit too small for my liking. When I sketch, I focus on the lines. I skip most shadows. I try to just find the outlines of each area. And this painting is filled with a lot of small details, so the sketching is taking a lot of time. Then I start to fill the canvas with color. I start with the background areas, those dark areas, to get the main colors of the scenery correct. Sometimes in the beginning of a painting, the painting looks quite dull. I patiently wait to add the highlights and niceties of the painting. The reason for that is that if you start too soon with the lighter colors, it's very easy to dim the darker parts and milk the contrast of the painting. 
But the most difficult with this painting was the quality of the photos that I painted from. The photos of these characters weren't really good enough to paint from, but I did it anyway. I prioritized the angle of the faces and uh, that was done at the expense of the lighting and the sheer quality of the photo. And you will see that this was really something that I had to pay for. This painting took much longer than I had expected and the reason for it was that I didn't have a good enough original uh, photo or image to paint from. When I don't have a good original to paint from, or a live scenery in front of me, for that matter, then I need to guess and make my best ideas and decisions for the colors in the painting. And that's much harder than to just follow an original image. But it's also more, more fun. And uh, I like a bit of a challenge, of course. And uh, this painting was a fun challenge. I fill up those main areas of the painting, continuously checking the colors to each other to get them roughly right. I'm a bit impatient in my temperament, so I sometimes find it hard to be thorough enough when checking the original color to my mixes that I apply on the canvas. That leads to some reworking and adjusting along the way, but at this stage I'm trying to get the colors up on the canvas to get a feel for the whole as much as possible. I know that I will need to rework a lot of areas and adjust the colors and create nuances and layers to the painting later on. And with experience, you learn to more effortlessly hit the right colors without so much checking. Another thing that is good to do when you work on a canvas is to step back a meter or two to see the painting from a little distance. This painting may not be as big as the original, but it's still almost a meter in width. And when you paint, you usually come quite close to the canvas and you get a quite narrow field of vision that can make it a bit difficult to take the right decisions in every situation. So stepping back lets you see the painting with somewhat fresh eyes and that's very useful. As you can see, I don't paint a whole character or object all at once, instead I take one color at a time. So I mix the paint on the palette and once I believe it's right, I add it to all different places on the canvas where I find that specific color. Regardless if it's a shadow of a character or a piece of clothing or something else. But let's talk about the characters in this painting one by one, even though my pencil jumps around a lot between them. I think it's a peculiar thing that a person like Jordan Peterson can be regarded as controversial these days. It just goes to show how divisive our legacy media is. And now I'm about to elevate him to Christ, but I don't mean to provoke them or him for that matter. I just think it's a fun idea to portray him like this. And uh, when you get an idea in your head, it can be difficult to get it out. I get a lot of ideas in my head often, and uh, most of them I don't do anything with. The ideas come too quickly for me to be able to act on them all. But uh, some of those ideas stick and then it's really an itching feeling hard to get rid of. And uh, you don't until you eventually do that very thing. And uh, once you've done it, then you're free. You're relieved and you're free of the spell and you can move on. Speaking of moving on, let's talk a little about Joe Rogan. You will see that he cost me a lot of headache in this painting. Sometimes it's hard to know when you paint a face if it's going to be easy or hard. And I didn't do any pre-sketching for this painting, which would have been good to do. Because that way you can uh, learn to find the lines in a face and the character really. Since he is an interviewer, not really someone who propagates for his own ideas necessarily, even though he does to some extent in his podcast, I thought it was suiting to have him standing there as a host, just like he's a host in his own show, listening to Jordan in this case, and maybe pouring him some wine or maybe a joint or whatever he gives to his guests. 
Now let's talk about Ben Shapiro. He's partly looking away and not showing that much of his face, but I'm somewhat lucky with him because he has such distinct eyebrows. And even if you don't see much of them in this painting and from this angle, you can still see a little bit of them. And I believe that that's enough for us to recognize that it's him. If you manage to get his profile roughly correct, those eyebrows will definitely help to tell that's him. But I don't want to overdo it here. You need to be subtle when you do these things. Another thing that comes in handy here is the yamaka, of course. So if the eyebrows don't give it away, that little hat will probably do it. It's fun to have him here as well. He is an energetic person. You can see that in his posture here. He is active and engaging in this painting. And that's kind of how I perceive him as well. A very energetic person with a lot of will and agency and intelligence. So I think that's a perfect spot for him in this image. Dave Rubin will be difficult to recognize in this painting. He's really looking away from the viewer, so you can barely see his profile even. I don't want to bash Dave Rubin. I have no reason to because I really like him as well. But just from the number of followers, I would guess he's the least known of these four gentlemen. So he will probably be the enigma of this painting. You know, the one that scholars 100 years from now will debate about. Who is that disciple to the left? Still, he's got a big following, but compared to his company here, I believe he's the least recognized of them. And even if it wasn't, it would still be difficult to tell that it's him in this painting, since you see so little of him. Maybe I'll have to make a solo portrait of him another time. Please let me know in the comments section if you have any suggestions for who you want me to paint, if you'd be interested in me painting, for example, Dave Rubin. So now I'm just finalizing the different details and fixing things that I'm not pleased with. Usually I paint for a couple of hours and then I stay away a little and uh, I'll look at it from afar and see things that I'm not pleased with and I come back. And that happened over and over again in this painting. I had especially a hard time to get Joe Rogan right. But at some point you need to make the decision to let it be to let the painting go its own merry way, so to speak, and that's what I'm going to do right now. If you enjoyed this video, please consider to like and share it, subscribe to get notified of, for upcoming videos, and I'm also happy to get comments, especially positive ones. If you're interested in learning to follow my method of painting, check out the links below this video. I have trainings and manuals, and I also do online classes that will quickly develop your painting skills. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one.